back here. First things first, we're here with Chris Canny again, and we are going viral. This weekend, Steelers fans are in an awkward position. They have to root for divisional rival Cleveland Browns to beat the Ravens in order to get into the postseason. However, some of the players are embracing the situation. Check this out. Steelers receiver Antonio Brown tweeted out, who else has their number 84 Browns jersey ready for Sunday? <laughs> Two points for creativity on that one. I like that, A.B. I ain't even mad at him for that. Yeah, that's smart. Yeah. I like that. Little scoreboard little watching is going to be going on in Pittsburgh. Oh, no doubt about it. I think Mike Tom was asked about that. He said, what's on the scoreboard is going to be left to the people that run the scoreboard. we got to handle all our business. Fans will know. Fans yeah. in the stadium will know. Word to the wise for the Steelers, though. Lock in on beating the Cincinnati Bengals. That's the most important thing. Well, yeah. It's a good yeah. point. Yeah. Don't look that. past that. Yeah. Pay attention to that. And they got Just Jeff Driscoll up against them. I'd be shocked if the Steelers can't beat Cincinnati this weekend. Uh, they've been shocking this the last two years. <laughs> We'll get to Kirk Cousins against Khalil Mack in a second, but first, Lakers Kings, De'Aaron Fox with the quick move toward the basket and a big slam. Nice little play Sacramento ran here. It's a good matchup with second-year point guards De'Aaron Fox from Kentucky. Ball from UCLA. They made a big matchup in college. We should see this matchup in the West for a long time to come. De'Aaron Fox been the best player on the most surprising team in the league this year. All right, Blazers, Warriors, Draymond Green with the aggressive pass to Clay Thompson. I mean, right off the noggin. The head you ever play NBA Street? <laughs> I played NBA Street. Yeah, you could do that's that to your opponent, those, right yeah. off the guy's head to, back to yourself. Yeah. You don't see, do that Clay, to your teammate, though. Light-skinned guys don't take to that getting hit with a ball. They bruise <laughs> easy. He's somewhere bruised up today. In that spot, it means he's a little darker than his normal complexion. <laughs> All right, we got just defining what a bruise is. That's, that's, that's the best moment ever. Texas ball, Baylor and Vanderbilt. Baylor's Denzel Mims can't make the catch in the end zone, but Vandy's Randall Haney can. Secures the interception. Look at this. Mims tries to tell him why he's hot. Can't. In the back of the end zone. Two feet down. That. Heels up. Is that like a rap song or something? It's a rap we reference. Doing? Tell him why I'm hot by Mims, a one hit wonder. I, Audience I was, got I it. I wasn't sure what he was up to. Audience got it. Don't you worry about it. Where's Check out his footwork, though. Mm -hmm. Check out his footwork. Both down. That'd have been good in the NFL. That's a hell of a play right there. Yeah, not too many DBs from Vandy. My man, um, Casey Hayward, San Diego, Chargers. There you go. Vandy, a few DB. Vandy DBs yeah. in the league. Yeah, they're nice with smart. Yeah. Ma, ma, ma. Nice. Moving on to the Vikings, who have a simple playoff scenario. Win, and they're in, but that's much easier said than done. Minnesota hosts a very good Bears team on Sunday. We're slated to play all their stars. A lot of eyes on Kirk Cousins. The Vikings signed the quarterback for games just like this one. Here's Cousins discussing what's on the line on Sunday. Well, it's not complicated. I want to win. We want to win. We understand what's at stake. There's no magic formula. There's no button you can push or hours you can put in to suddenly snap your fingers and guarantee a win. So you do all you can. Give everything you have. Uh, there have been plenty of games this year where I've given everything I have, and we don't come out through that exact same process, and it's more than good enough, and I played a very high level, and we played a very high level. So, um, you know, you just have to, you know, be the best team that night. All right, Chris Caney, what do Kirk Cousins and this Vikings offense have to do if they are going to beat a hot Bears team? Well, they got to do a little better than only, have tw only having 22 rushing yards, and, and that's what happened in their first game in Soldier Field. Mm -hmm. They're going to have to run the football. Now, good news for them is that Kevin Stefanski, their offensive coordinator, the guy that they uh, gave the job after they fired DeFilippo, He's made a concerted effort to focus on running the football, and that's what Mike Zimmer wants to do. They want to play good defense, and what complements a good defense? A running game. Now, I don't know that they're going to have a lot of success against the Chicago Bears being able to run the football, but they're going to have to have some balance in order to give themselves a chance. But in listening to that sound bite from Kirk Cousins, the one thing that bothers me and what he says was, I'm going to go out there and give my best effort, and then, you know, we'll see what happens. Sometimes it's good enough, sometimes it's not. Too far often, it's not good enough against quality competition because Kirk Cousins is 1-5 in five this year against teams that have a chance on qualifying for the postseason. So, I mean, you gave him and a... And 5-21 in his career, 5-24 and in his career against teams with a winning record. 5-24 and in his career against teams with a winning record. And the only win that we're talking about them having was Week 5 in Philadelphia, which is a team that's also fighting for the play, their playoff lives. If the Vikings can't get it done, they would win. They would get in that spot if they win. So, I look at Kirk Cousins and I say, I, I'm going to need a little more 
more from the quarterback position, and it's certainly got to be more than what we saw in their matchup in Week 11 against the Bears. I understand that the Vikings are more than their quarterback, and that the, the defense last year, which was top three in everything, is not top three in everything this year. Now, they're still very good, and they're the number one third down defense, number one red zone defense, number one sack defense, but points, they're seventh. Overall yards, they're third, a tick beneath where they were last year. And obviously, they were running the ball at a historically low rate before they fired John D. Filippo. But the reason they went out and got Kirk Cousins was they thought they could get better at that quarterback position. They love both their wide receivers as they should. Thielen started the year on a record-breaking pace, tailed off a bit, a but having a very good year. And Stephon Diggs is an excellent receiver as well. They, they, they need Kirk Cousins to play well in this game. The reason you want a true franchise quarterback rather than Case Keenum is when you're playing critical games against really good defenses that you trust he can if he's not going to win you the game he's not going to lose you the game and he's going to make enough plays to put you in position to win the game like you see you've talked about how Cousins has been over scrutinized his whole career from when he was drafted being in the same draft class as RG3 to the contract with Washington to then this new big contract with Minnesota I get all of that well that scrutiny is going to reach a fever pitch if the Vikings go from 13 and 3 in the two seed to out of the playoffs because they lose mm. the final week of the regular season like and I think that'll be fair criticism if that's what plays out this weekend well what you consider to be fair and other people that's that's totally up to your judgment I, I, I don't care the Vikings let's go back to last free agency what were the choices at quarterback well they I mean I, they could have kept case there was Kirk okay. Cousins there wasn't a lot of options there's never a lot of options oh Okay, we don't we don't forgot about that. Yeah, we act like the, like the Vikings was in the driver's seat, like they had eight different quarterbacks to build choose from. And it's very very rare that you're going to get. And I never called Kirk Cousins a franchise quarterback. And the only reason why you called him that's because the money that they put on. That's him. that's okay. Okay, why do you call him a franchise quarterback? Well, see, I, I see. I, I I don't think it's accurate that you've never called him a franchise quarterback. I, I I when they when they signed Kirk Cousins, the reason that they signed him and we talked about it on this show was because they they didn't they didn't have to be a top five quarterback. Mm -hmm. But the difference between a replacement level quarterback in case and what we both called a franchise quarterback, a guy that can elevate the players around. I him. just think right now the definition of a franchise quarterback and what you're going to accept as your quarterback is Dak Prescott is he a franchise quarterback to me no no, no. Oh, okay but you got is Matt Ryan a, a, a yes I okay. believe he is Matt Stafford I, I I say no I know you like Stafford but you got to put somebody in there yeah you got, and you have to pay someone <laughs> yeah in this year they didn't have yeah. another choice they made the right selection now people are just consumed with the dollars this Vikings team how's the team put together Jenny you ask me all the time well what's their identity well, what's the identity of the organization? You can't change that with the quarterback. He wasn't a force-type multiplier. Diggs and Thielen were already good before he got there. They Now, Chase was able to benefit from that. Sam Bradford was able to benefit from that. I just think people's perspective of this team has changed so much because of the $84 million that they gave to the quarterback. What's important being the Vikings quarterback? Can you beat Green Bay and can you beat the Chicago Bears? All those other records and stuff, they it won't matter. As you mentioned, the first time they played the Bears, did this team support him? No. Mm -hmm. 22 yards rushing. Mm -hmm. Now, he had one tie, one win against Green Bay, so he's played fairly well in the most important games for this franchise. Now, going forward, that's the way that he will be judged, but this should be a ball control. It should be a defensive-oriented team, because that $84 million is a drop in the bucket compared to the amount of money that they're paying on that defense. Their defensive line, they're highly compensated. Their linebackers, highly compensated, and their secondary, full of all those first round picks, right. they're making a bucket of money. But CC, isn't that why they had to go out and try to upgrade the quarterback position with Kirk Cousins? They did because upgrade you, the quarterback. Beca because you can't keep all those pieces on the defensive side of the ball together right. for so long. There's only so long you can maintain that type of window. So I, I don't think they really had a choice in terms of what they were going to do at the quarterback position. I think they paid right. the right guy. It's just that you're not necessarily getting the result that you wanted to see in the team this year. And you're right, but Vikings fans simplify it and they say, well, last year we last Last year, we went 13-3 and three with Case Keenan. Yeah, but their math this is year. wrong. Their math is wrong. Every year in the NFL is totally different. Mm -hmm. Uh, they, they should never calculate it like that. Well, but, the, but this math isn't wrong, and this is the only reason that talking about the salary it, 
is relevant and matters. Is money spent on one guy is money you can't spend on other guys. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the defense yeah. and how it's going to be hard to keep those guys together. They made the conscious choice because the defense is expensive. It's about to get a hell of a lot more expensive when some of these young guys this offseason come off the rookie contracts. They are going to have to make more tough decisions this offseason because they made the decision to commit $28 million per year to their quarterback. His end of the bargain is to win games like this one. They were already paying the quarterback almost $20 million mm -hmm. last year with Sam Bradford getting 15, what they paid Case to come over, mm -hmm. and Teddy Bridgewater. Yep. So they had... 20 million almost in, in, in the quarterback already. Yeah. Right, and, and they made a choice to spend even more because they thought they were going to get better at the spot. They could have kept Teddy for almost nothing and decided to go with, I in real time, I thought they made the right decision. You thought they made the right decision. I think you still believe they made the no, right decision. No, I think decision. they made the right decision. Right, that, okay, that, it, that's, that's fine. There ain't no quarterback it, or franchise quarterback it, if you don't run the ball. Okay, they got it, but for, for him and for the fans of Minnesota that you're talking about, they need to win this football game and at least qualify for the postseason, give him a chance to create some type of postseason resume up to this point he hasn't been able to. Chris Caney, I keep saying goodbye and you keep coming back. Are you coming back? <laughs> you're done? Okay, thank you so much. Have